Good morning, Hannah here with Rundle's Urban Farm and today I'm going to take you on a tour of our garden and show you uh, the tactics I'm using to control bugs in the garden. We've had a lot of earwigs this year and also they look like gnats. I'm not really sure what they are but they're really attacking the zucchini and the winter squash. So I'll show you um, Actually, I'll talk about the spray that we use to uh, deter those guys. So, hope you enjoy this week eight garden tour. All right, so things are really taking off here in the garden. This is the winter squash trellis. And you can see some of the squash are starting to climb finally. We've got a little spaghetti squash hanging out here. And these are some of the winter squash trialing varieties and they're starting to climb. And then over here, we have, I believe the ones climbing back here are a kabocha. And then this one here, the smaller one is an acorn squash. And then over here, I'll show you this little Hubbard squash flower opened this morning. And I did pollinate it with a Q-tip just to be sure it got uh, fertilized. But I did see a bee moving from the male flower over here to the female flower here. So that should be good to go. All right, and then on to our tomatoes. We have Brandywine, which so far only has one green tomato on it. We have, the next one is a Pantano Romanesco, and it's huge. This should be one of the earlier producing varieties, but I'm only seeing a couple of green tomatoes yet. Then we have Cherokee Purple. We've got some beautiful big green tomatoes on here. And then the next one, I believe is Blue Beauty, and you can see here on the green tomatoes, there's a little bit of blue, which is from the anthocyanins in the fruit. Um, so those should be really pretty. And then we have, I believe the next ones are Hungarian Heart tomatoes. And you can see these have kind of an interesting a uh, heart shape, as in the human heart and not a uh, drawing of a heart. Um, and then next we have wild boar indigo apple tomatoes. <clears throat> and these are gonna be a smaller, either saladet or cherry sized tomato. And they also have blue around the tops. And the next ones, I believe, are black crim. Yep. And they are one of the more early slicer tomatoes. And then here at the end, we have a San Marzano, which produces some really interesting shaped uh, oblong paste tomatoes. And then over here we have our giant Krinkovic Yugoslavian plant with quite a few green tomatoes. We have our slicer tomato trials and the first to produce some green tomatoes is the Smiley. And then we have the German Pink, which has not produced any green ones yet. And we have the church, which hasn't either. And then we have our paste tomato trials and you can see the airy leaf is starting to produce some little paste tomatoes. And over here, this tomato, uh, looks like the end got eaten off there. Don't know what happened with that. Um, and then I believe 
the Ronaldo. Oh, there is one little guy up there. And then Salvatore Select is leading the pack of toma paste tomatoes with that big guy right there. And then we will take a look at the peppers. So we've got King of the North, which technically these should be the earliest of the bell peppers I'm growing uh, in 60 to 70 days, I believe. Nothing on them yet, and we are right at 60 days. So they are failing to be the earliest. Then we have Violet Purple Sparkle Pepper here. You can see the, that beauty back there. We have a large crop of basil. I believe this is either Emily or Mamolo basil from Baker Creek, and I really, really like it. Then we have our purple jalapeno. And I believe the ones in the back are orange spice jalapenos. And this is how we catch the earwigs, which have been eating all our peppers. You can see a lot of them have been chewed on. So the, the bowl there is olive oil and the earwigs just crawl into it. I don't know what they like about olive oil, but they sure do. Um, and then here we have mystery peppers because I didn't label them anything but peppers. Don't know why I did that. And then we've got rosemary, a nice little crop of it here, and our zucchini. Now the zucchini you can see is also pretty bug eaten. I've never had this problem with zucchini before, but yesterday I came in here and I had made a concoction of garlic, onions, hot chili peppers, cinnamon, and dish soap in water and came out here and sprayed it on these guys and that should deter the pests. I don't like spicy or potent. Um, and then back here, we've got some cantaloupe that are doing really well. And we've got our mystery squash. Not sure what we're going there. Then here, we have two tomato plants. These were um, cuttings when I pruned a Cherokee purple tomato, I believe. And I, they were so big, I couldn't bear to throw them away so I stuck them in water and they did end up rooting and I stuck them in the ground. One of them is looking a little better than the other but they're both growing. And then we have our onions which again I've chopped the tops off of them so the tops don't fall over and cause the bulb to stop growing. We've got some watermelon here and back through there. And then we've got bush beans and the bush beans are starting to blossom. I don't know if we can find any. Oh, see there, right in there is a little flower. So we should, oh, and here's another one. So we should be getting some green beans very soon. This low lying squash plant is a delicata squash. It's a type of winter squash. Uh, more green beans. This is a flower patch. We've got a little bumblebee enjoying the cosmos here. And these are called Love in a Mist. They are one of my favorite flowers to grow. Marigolds are lettuce, which has finally recovered from the deer. Um, more basil in there nasturtiums, peppers, and here this one at the front is a banana pepper and this one back here is also supposed to be a banana pepper but the shape is certainly a lot more like a shishito pepper. It's got a blunt end and uh, some ribbing and the banana peppers are pretty smooth and have a pointed end. And then we've got eggplant, 
and our purple basil. We've got decent patch of carrots here and more peppers. And these guys have some big, if I can get to them, some big peppers on them. More peppers, cilantro, which has gone to seed. And these are our leading bell peppers back here. I believe these are Ruia bell peppers. And then we've got our best looking carrots right here. And the rest of the winter squash. And this is our compost pile wonder squash. I'm not exactly sure how many plants we've got in here. Probably at least three. But you can see here we've got a nice little winter squash. I believe this is a hybrid of something we grew, some of the varieties we grew last year. Um, it looks a lot like a buttercup squash, but the coloring is a little odd. So I think it crossed with uh, maybe a pumpkin or something that was lighter in color. Here's a real quick look at our grow bag squash. They're doing pretty big. One observation we have is that the squash in bigger grow bags are much bigger than the squash in this little grow bag. So that just goes to show that how much nutrients they get from the soil. Um, so the bigger the grow bag, the more nutrients they're gonna get. Here are the front yard raised beds. On the trellis, we have uh, mostly pink wing cucumbers, and we harvested our first few yesterday. In the middle, we have tomatoes, and the tomatoes are being taken over a little bit by the dill here in the front. And then we've got peppers, and I'm really excited for these to start producing. The three bushy looking ones are habanada peppers, which are habaneros without any spice to them. And we've got our strawberry. All right, and this is our last raised bed. And we've got gladiolas in the back. Kabocha and acorn squash, winter squash, and onions. This little garden bed here is one of my favorite spots. It's just so bright and cheerful looking. <clears throat> and then we've got our bagged tomatoes. And they are also looking very healthy and nice. Thank you for taking a look at the gardens with me today. I hope you enjoyed um, touring Rundle's Urban Farm and that you can get some useful tips like how to get rid of earwigs. Have a great week and we will see you again next week with another garden update.